Okay. So this is a new episode of the show. Yeah. And Nathan and I are here. Hi, Nathan. Hi. How's it going, man? Well, we just finished recording this episode. Yeah. And boy, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. If this is your first time tuning to the show, or if you're a returning listener, I just felt it was appropriate. Mm-hmm. To, and, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say. This episode is going to trigger some people. Yeah. Not because of our content, but because of the, what the movie is yes. that we're covering this week. If you're not familiar with 365 Days, I would, uh, we'll t- I mean, we talk about this at the end of the episode. I would personally not recommend watching it. Yeah. It's a pretty deplorable piece of filmmaking. Yep. But just a heads up, if you still want to hear our thoughts on it, if you like listening to us ramble and and try to sort our way through things, we still do that. But it is not a fun bit of subject matter that we are covering today. Exactly. I would say you don't even have to see the movie to really enjoy the episode. Right. We guide you through it. But just some trigger warnings. This whole movie, uh, you know, spoiler alert, if you do want to see it for some reason, I don't recommend it either. But if you do and you want to go in fresh, you probably press stop right now. Uh Go watch and then come back but for those who want to keep going forward uh there is some trigger warnings in terms of the content of the movie itself and obviously we have to talk about that stuff but yeah any kind of sexual assault or you know it the furthest extremes of that you can get this movie has it in spades for some reason yeah so if you want to keep listening please we 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 promise you we keep it light yeah as light as possible but we don't make light of it absolutely 100 percent. we still have a fun episode as we always do but obviously with the subject matter we just thought it'd be appropriate to let people know ahead of time so that they know they know what they're getting in for 100 percent. without further ado then let's get into the episode we're sorry yeah very sorry right off the bat sorry Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Bam. Shh. The movie's starting. <sighs> I'm Nathan Simmons. <laughs> uh, I am not a bag of potatoes you could just transport around without permission. Okay, now, so whenever he's not out busting heads because he smelled crime, he's back at the lab performing outrageous sexual experiments on her supple young body. Oh my god. Now, here's the twist, and there is a twist. Oh my god. We show it. Oh we god. show all of it. <laughs> because what's the one major thing missing from all action movies these days, guys? Full, full penetration. penetration yeah guys we're going to show full penetration we're going to show <laughs> a lot of it i mean we're talking you know graphic scenes of him really going to town on this hot young lab oh tech. my god from behind 69 oh. anal vaginal cowgirl reverse cowgirl god. all the hits all the big ones all the good ones i don't know about this <laughs> then he smells crime again he's out busting head then he's back to the lab for some more full penetration smells god. crime back to the lab full penetration crime penetration crime <laughs> full penetration crime penetration <laughs> and this goes on and on and back and forth for about 90 minutes or so until the movie just sort of ends. I can't co-sign on this. God, I, I appreciate the attempt, Mally, but God, <laughs> I don't think anything can save this movie. It, even as always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. I don't think you can do it. Oh, no, this is by far the worst movie we have ever covered. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be funny to do it, but um, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not funny at all. Not, not at all. <laughs> no. What's funny is how it's not funny. What if we remade <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, but with infinitely more dicks in it? This movie is not just bad, though. Like, yeah, it, no, like no. it, it is. It's reprehensible. Yep. Like I, yeah, yeah. Until today, well, until I started trying to watch this movie two days ago. Jurassic World 2 was like I thought the pinnacle of how bad we could get. <laughs> oh no. And then but a Jurassic World 2 uh-huh. wasn't a movie that was like, hey, human trafficking can be good. Uh-huh. This movie right 30 seconds in, they're discussing human trafficking 12-year-olds. I, my first note. My first note. Do not root for any of these people. Yep. No, every single person in this movie can go right in the garbage. Yep. Including the people who fucking made it. Yeah. Yep. And you know it's a real bad movie and when we just completely glossed over the name of the show, what we're all about here, but this is... What are we doing? <laughs> we No, we're getting right into it, just like okay. They did. I wrote that all caps multiple times in my notes. I don't have very many notes because this movie is a big pile of bullshit nothing. Yeah, yeah. And this is coming from our resident incel. This is coming from the guy who owns an autographed copy of The Room. Like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. Well, I'll say this. 
for new listeners who are tuning in for the first time, I, I get the fuck out now. <laughs> I can't imagine you would want to be like searching your podcast app for any show discussing this movie. But if you if you just happen to be that person, here's the thing: this movie's a hit. I know, I know. <laughs> they made two more of them. They I made know. two more that came out this year. Uh-huh. Both sequels this year. They Lord of the Rings did. Oh. They shot them at the same time. Yeah. Oh my god. But if if you are if you are one of those people, I I'll say this. Uh huh. First of all. Our show is the Silver Linings Playlist, as the title will tell you. And sure. We like, or in this case, we're forced to watch movies <sighs> that uh, don't end in happily ever afters. Uh-huh. And we try to find the good in those endings, the silver lining, as you will. Mm-hmm. But the second thing I'll say is I I don't fault anyone who watched this movie and was like, I, I had f- fine. It was fine. Or, you know, I, I do. I do. I yeah. fault the living fuck out of them. No, here's why I would say that, because I... We were forced to watch this against our will, and we had no idea what we were getting into. And yeah, just just to be clear, you guys aren't gonna let me pick movies anymore. Are I you? really could, was like, I considered it. I really considered it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, Mally, didn't you say off mic that you had seen part of this, and that was like part of the reason why you picked it because yeah. you were just like, "What the fuck is this?" Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And now that you've s- seen the full thing, you're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I walked into a room and people were watching this, uh-huh. and I just kind of sat down it was like uh, like doing other shit on like phone and whatnot uh-huh. and just kept looking up and being like what the fuck is going on that makes me feel about 15 percent better about it being <laughs> on the list i swear that's <laughs> why i'm saying i don't fault anyone because you could be just browsing netflix and put this on totally and it, you're like oh this is scandalous netflix has this listed under j- just the category movies based on books nope. yeah. it doesn't fucking tell you what to expect yeah. it doesn't tell you that it's a stockholm syndrome from fantasy uh, i will say i did that whole it's always sunny routine at the top of the episode uh-huh i wasn't trying to be funny that is an accurate description of this movie oh no absolutely i i don't feel like you were like making light of what this movie does you're literally just like that that has to be how this movie was fucking sold right yeah. it's it's the punchline to a joke that already exists but it's a joke that you should have like created in the first place like right <laughs> the writers of this book or this movie whoever the fuck uh-huh. saw that episode of it's always sunny and they were like fucking write that down yeah. oh my God, write that down yeah they did the work for us the only difference is that that instead of it being a cop, it's a crime boss. Well, and also, also, it seems like the people who made this movie saw Fifty Shades, and I feel bad for E.L. James and the people behind Fifty Shades because it keeps getting compared to the, which Fifty Shades is garbage. Yeah, but someone saw that and said, you know what, this movie needs less consent, <laughs> and like that is yeah. that's like the fucking disgusting thing about this movie. And again, that's Nathan saying this. Yeah, no, I, I've I've seen. I'm sorry, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen porn with more like credibility uh-huh. and like more uh, consent and more clear written out rules than this movie. What are you talking about? This is a bathtub. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I got the reference. I just want to let you know. I know you did. <laughs> also, I mean, there's so little imagination going into these that the sequel follows the Friday uh, naming convention. Uh-huh. The second one is just the next 365 days, uh-huh. which is a lie because this movie also, like we were saying off mic, doesn't take place over the course of 365 days. We yeah. don't even get the full year. No. Nope. We get like what two months? Two months. Yeah, two months is insane for all this stuff. And then I think another one's called like 365 days. The this next day. day or this day? Yes. Yeah. yeah what the fuck? Did, I, don't, I gotta tell you guys. Uh huh. I need. I gotta see the other two. I gotta, oh, I not, buddy. not because I want to, but I like. I, I I need to know that at the end of this journey that these characters go on, that there's something like, I hope that I want this guy dead. I mean, too. I got to see him die. What journey? That's the the point. I got to see something. They all get (sighs) AIDS. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. It's going to have the same ending as Trapped in the Closet. I (laughs) promise you. Oh, no. Now you taught me into it. Now I really do got (laughs) to. Oh, my God. A rubber. Rubber. Oh, there's no rubbers to be seen anywhere in this movie. Don't even worry about that. There's a midget in the closet. Closet. (laughs) This movie, uh, this 365 days, colon, this movie. (laughs) Yeah. Trapped in the closet really walked so this movie could run, huh? Oh, my God. Yeah. Actually, no. Fuck that. 
Trapped in the Closet ran so this movie could fucking crawl. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Massimo and R. Kelly have the same energy. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Who the fuck? Wait, who the fuck is Massimo? The lead character of this movie. <laughs> Apparently the lead guy's name. Yeah. They have names? Uh-huh. Apparently. You would you would think that, that it's not necessary, but they got him. They got him in there. Wait. Okay. He's the dude with absolutely no blowjob courtesy. Right. Got it. Jesus Christ. He's also the guy who sings like four of the songs in this movie. Oh my god! Is he really? Yeah. Oh my god! Wait the a- the actor or R. Kelly? No, the, the actor. actor. Oh. <laughs> the actor formerly known as R. Kelly. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, his like his song. One of his songs plays over the end credits and at least two of the sex scenes. Okay, so that makes sense then that he is a musician. It, Does it? <laughs> and what? Well, because he's got no charisma. Like he's nobody not- in this movie does. No, that's what I'm saying. It makes more sense that he's not. This is not his forte. Mm-hmm. This guy, I got to tell you too. This is like him putting on he's like this is his reel to try and play italian batman like <laughs> he's doing the christian bale impersonation italian batman dude and he's also just michael myersing around the uh-huh. whole fucking movie like uh-huh. he's behind you you turn around he's gone well and that's what i'm my question is like does the movie want us to buy into this romance or are we I all supposed so. to even after she falls in love with him continue to be like this is the scariest son of a bitch i've ever seen in my life no no no, no. this this movie is telling you that this is a happy ever after this is because that's insane there's two shopping montages in this movie dustin there are four (laughs) Four? i counted them yeah there's more what yeah because there's if you count the multiple dress it montages if you count when the two camp stylists come in for like three seconds right there are so many you're right i forgot about those yep yeah yep this is this all right. Okay. I know we have a lot to talk about. We and, don't. And yet nothing at all. We really <laughs> don't. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, I'm trying to keep this on rails and I'm trying to make this a, at least a 60 minute episode. Maybe this will be shorter than The Strangers. Who knows? We'll find out. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> like, fully, like, legitimately. <laughs> like, I I was, I, 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 yeah, like trying to get my notes in order. And I'm like, how do I talk about this yeah one of my notes is literally in all caps kidnapping stockholm syndrome fuck yep. yeah that's that's it this is a movie that like romanticizes classic abuse behavior right right okay so let's do this let's talk about like uh the the, the production and everything about it and then i'll give a brief rundown on the plot okay and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong on any of this stuff but here we go okay good luck <laughs> I feel like you guys, when we did Under the Cherry Moon, where Uh I'm just like, I I wrote down, I don't know what her job or business is. Oh my God, yes, that's a huge... Okay, (laughs) let me go ahead and tell you this before we even get into that. So I watched this with my wife oh and god i was like look i gotta do this for the show i know it's a bad movie uh-huh. i know it's supposed to be like real horny do you want to watch it with me priscilla fucking loved it didn't she <laughs> not at all no that's shocking so we had the same questions the whole fucking movie the job why are there so many needle drops like everything i'm so i'm so glad we were simpatico with this shit because i had to look on wikipedia to figure out that laura was on vacation oh i was like why doesn't she know why did, like i did some well well, here's the other thing. Uh-huh. I watched this movie while uh, under the influence of cough medicine because uh-huh. I have a really bad cold. Oh, nice. You were like, how, w- how, how would Lil Wayne watch this movie? <laughs> Sip it on the lean, you know? That's true. Of yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, honestly, it allowed me to sort of, I think it dulled some of my rage yeah. until I, like, was going back to, like, I was trying to connect the dots. So, I've watched this, like, one and a half times. Oh, you poor soul. And the second time I, because I watched, like, part of it, I just started to get so fucking angry that I was like, maybe the guys can answer it for me later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's say this. The year is 2020. I'm not even going to bother pronouncing anyone who stars in this movie because they're all foreign actors and I just can't pronounce their names. I don't want to do them. Do you think that this movie caused COVID? Oh, (laughs) big if true. Big (laughs) if true. Yeah. The year's 2020, like I said, it's a duo director, um, Barbara and Tomas. I can't pronounce their last name, so I'm not going to bother. Mm-hmm. It's mostly relatively unknowns in terms of like American culture, but sure. like the actress that plays Laura, this is like her first role. I think 
I don't want to. I don't want to like sully her name, but I think she may have been an adult entertainer before this. Okay. I think I read that somewhere in her bio. I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to look it up. I, if I'm wrong, apologies to that actress. But I think I read that somewhere. Uh huh. The budget, no idea, because it's a Netflix movie. Who can know? And it grossed nine million dollars in theatrical runs worldwide. So here's the thing: she didn't uh, do adult entertainment, uh-huh. but she did uh, go to college for puppetry. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, AST National Academy of Theater Arts, according to Wikipedia. Do you think that the puppetry comes into play in this movie with like the fake penises and everything? Good God, I don't know. <laughs> the movie currently sits at a very impressive zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Good. Yeah, good. Amazing. And guys, you wouldn't be shocked by this at all, but it was the winner at the Razzies mm. for Worst Screenplay. Mm-hmm. It was nominated for Worst Picture. Can, mm-hmm. can someone actually look it up and see what it lost to? Nom- Nominated for Worst Picture. I know. Can, can someone look it up real quick and see what it was nominated? Sure. What what year was it? 2021. Uh, worst Picture was Absolute Proof. What no idea is that what that like is. Is that like some Bruce Willis directed DVD thing? It's the, it's the One America News Network movie oh. that was about Trump oh. winning the election. That's right. Okay, that makes... Uh, oh, that's a tough call. I don't know. Worst Director went to Sia for music. So, you know, sometimes the, the Razzies get it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, nominated for Worst Picture, nominated for Worst Actor for the Lead Guy, nominated for, for Worst Actress for the Lead Lady, uh, Worst Remake, Ripoff, or Sequel. Sure. I don't, I don't know what this is a ripoff of. I guess Fifty Shades of Grey? Ripoff of, yeah. Well, you know, the Razzies, they kind of just twist things to, like, make that happen. Sure, sure. Like, Hubie Halloween was nominated for being a ripoff of Ernest Scared Stupid, which um, I'm just like, it's a, it's a comedy at Halloween. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Okay. Well, in that case, Halloween Ends is a ripoff of Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. I update for the listeners. Uh, I've mentioned movies, talking about movies with my dad on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I When I visited my parents for Thanksgiving uh, and asked them. Did you watch this with your father? Oh, no, but oh, okay. I watched. Did he say nice penis? <laughs> <laughs> like, he did watch Halloween Ends. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good looking dick. Yeah. His reaction <laughs> to Halloween Ends was just like, I don't even know what that movie was. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's good. I like that. Why'd he smell her breasts? <laughs> I like this voice you've created for my dad. I just assume, you know. Uh-huh. Was he born raised Floridian? No. Well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no? Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay, Mally, this is your pick. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm i going to try and run down the plot of this thing, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong somewhere. <laughs> okay. I don't know what the fucking plot is. I know. Based on the very little information I was able to gather. So, right off the bat, I was under the assumption yeah. that- Laura, the main actress, the main character here, I thought she was like in like the FBI or something <laughs> because of the opening scene where she's being interviewed. Like, how did this go so wrong? What happened? Oh, yeah. You got to have balls to do this job. No, she turns out she's an executive at like manager at a hotel. Uh huh. That's her fucking job. Great. I don't know what this, what the opening scene has to do with anything. But anyway, so the, the main guy, Mass, Massimo? Massimo. Massimo. Well, you, you, you skipped over the opening scene where the dude's dad is like, one day everything the light touches will yep. be yours, Simba. Yeah. Yep. Big, I wrote big Mufasa energy. Big Mufasa energy. I thought you were going to say you thought she was in the FBI because that the beach is the only place that shot could have come from. Right. Yes, I agree, because I don't know where this guy gets sniped from. Yeah, because they cut to the wide shot. There's no one else in that roof, and that's the only building for miles. And and there's no venture into who killed his dad, why did he kill his dad. Mm -hmm. No one cares. No one cares. No. Other crime people. More crime. The the general consensus is this guy- Back to the lab. Becomes the the head of this crime organization. Mm -hmm. And, okay, this is the part I was kind of confused about. He keeps seeing- This part. Yeah, 365 days, call it this part. Um, <laughs> he keeps seeing Lara in his dreams, even though he's never met her. He saw her on the beach. But was she actually on the beach? Uh, yes, because his, his dad acknowledges her too, and he's like, uh, look out for those ladies. But why would she be there? Great question. That's clearly like a crime private beach place. That's a crime beach. That's a crime <laughs> beach. You can't be at a crime beach if you're not in the crime. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I was so disoriented because this movie's shot like an episode of Riverdale. Like yeah. the camera never stops spinning. We get all these un- unnecessary it's like a music drone video. shots. Yeah, it's an Enrique Iglesias video. Yes. 
Yes, it is. A hundred percent. It's an Enrique Iglesias feud. But okay. So we're still at the opening scene. So I guess he sees her. Simba. <laughs> he sees her at the airport, has her kidnapped. Uh-huh. And then ex- into his castle. His castle looks like the, the, the fucking Brazzers castle or whatever that place <laughs> is. <laughs> And says, I've seen you in my dreams. You're the woman I've, I know I'm going to fall in love with. You have three, this is where the the title comes from. And this is the part where I lost my fucking mind realizing this was the plot of the movie. Mm -hmm. You have 365 days to fall in love with me or else. Now you're only going to need about eight weeks. Right, right. And he's, yeah, he's like, and I'll let you go. I won't even touch you without your consent, which he frequently does. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. Lies. Just all lies. We're also skipping over him uh, finding out that cocaine has been stolen from his business. Uh And so the first thing he does is go into the back and have oral sex with a stewardess. Oh my God. I, look, look, I'm not doing the, I'm not trying to hit the beats. I'm just trying to get to the plot. No, I know. But it, it, it's one of those things where it's just like, it, it is, she has no dialogue. Yeah. We're just meant to be, uh, uh, understand that she's cool with it. Yeah. She's an open mouth. Because she walks away and smiles like it was after a first date in a rom-com. Mm-hmm. Like she acts like she's in a fucking Gary Marshall movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's she's an open mouth for him, and she Ugh. is into it, apparently. Jesus Christ. It's so fucking gross. It's so bad. Okay, so again, just basic plot here. Yes, so, you're right. Yes. So, he's, he says that she's resistant at first, obviously. Uh-huh. Clearly developed Stockholm Syndrome at some point. Uh-huh. He's going around doing all this terrible shit. She, she does, quote unquote, fall in love with him mm-hmm. because he saves her from falling overboard in his yacht. No, no, no. He, he pushes, pushes her, her overboard. Oh, you're right. You're right. I am so sorry you were right but then she goes you saved me and then he yeah he saves her quote unquote uh-huh. and then she apologizes to him yes i'm so sorry for scaring you i promise to be more obedient she says yes and she's i think she says earlier on that she can't swim and that's that sets up that payoff but we also set up that she has a heart condition yep. that never pays off yep Yep, uh, you have a weak heart, but then we're treated to, like, um, again, I'm trying to just hit the basic points, but since we're here, we're treated to, like, a five-minute montage where apparently her weak heart can resist all of that stuff. But anyways, we'll come back to that. Put a pin in that. They established that they had sex for 23 hours straight because he says, we slept for one hour last night. Yep. We'll we'll come back. We'll come back. Keep all your notes (laughs) aligned. No. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> so she goes back to Poland. He sends her to Poland because something's happening. We don't find out really what it is. Right. And there she's like, she's been kidnapped this whole time. So she goes to her friend's apartment who's at first angry uh-huh. that she was apparently alive and not telling her. And then is totally down with it. Yes. They go out. They have fun. There's a- <laughs> They swap hair colors. They do. Uh, Massimo- returns and is like everything's taken care of Uh and then in the last 15 minutes of the movie which we'll get there when we get there but Uh they drop a pregnancy bomb on us and also a marriage bomb Uh so they get they're about to get married and then for some unknown unreleased entity apparently tries to take out laura they try to princess diana her we are told (laughs) quote they are going to kill Laura. Yeah. They. We never see it. It's it's like I said, they they Princess Diana her uh-huh. in the tunnel. She never gets to tell them she's pregnant, and then we just cut to a shot of the ocean. I and that's it. I did write down season five of the crown is wild. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the basic plot, if you want to call it that. But that is it's shoestring together. Yep. So silver silver linings. Um <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and as always, <laughs> fuck. It's a shoestring plot just to get you from point A to point B and a lot of sex scenes in between. Well, no, point T to point A. I mean, yeah, like you were you, you were you talking <laughs> about how. <laughs> nice. like, by the way, by the way, before you continue. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's insane because you, like you said, there are like. Uh, suggestions of a plot yeah. occasionally. There's something happening in the background that we're not privy to. There's something going on with his ex, Anna. There's uh-huh. something going on with another gang that apparently only punched him in the chest. That's, okay, <laughs> yeah. God, there's so many questions left unanswered, but 
This is why I got. I want to watch the rest just to see if any of this makes sense. Doubt it. <laughs> Here's the thing. W- w- this will be your leftovers for this season. Oh, you yes. no, you no. watch these. <laughs> report back in to us. Tell us how it's going. Christmas day watches. I put the. I'm sitting Priscilla down. Guess what? We're, we got two more of these to sit. Through. <laughs> 365 Christmas day. God. Oh my god! If someone fucks a reindeer. <laughs> Let's get let's get into the movie. We we've covered the whole fucking thing. Episode yeah, we did over. it. We, pr- we pretty much have. I have guys. I got d- notes for you. I have a lot of notes. Oh, I do not. <laughs> I, same. Okay, that's fine. We have covered my notes already. I most of my notes are about the soundtrack. Yeah, that's most of mine too. I think I have one page of notes that's just devoted to the music. So it's we'll get there. Perfect. But the first line of dialogue in this movie <sighs> Simba. is exact basically this guy saying, Hey, we've got these girls we could traffic for you. Some of them are barely twelve. Ugh. That's where we're starting in the movie. Right. This is pitched as supposed to be like uh, you know, a housewife's fantasy, right? Like right. these are like the the Fabio novel like romantic novels, but turned up to eleven, right? Luckily, Massimo and his dad are immediately like, No, we don't do that. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh, but, you know, then he proceeds to be a fucking knob for the rest of the movie. So right. I think that scene is just to establish, hey, this guy's going to do some bad shit. Right. But he's not that bad. Yeah. 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 At least it's not. P- but it's like these bad guys don't seem to understand why it's bad. They're like, no, it's a good deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're talking about like they're trying to sell you a vacuum at your doorstep. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then this guy, Massimo's dad, again, gets, he gets a prudered here. Like, he does. It's, it's a, the it's magic, a magic bullet, bullet situation. <laughs> and he gets a hole put him in the back, just like Ed Harris in the history of violence. He like, does. It, he, his, his back explodes out. And then I, he says something like, my dad got shot through the heart, but the bullet also went through me. You could, uh, you could almost say they blew his back out. Yay. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Okay. No, that's good. That one's good. That's the, those are the jokes i'm here for and then the soundtrack well we're going into it now i lo- i literally lost count of the amount of just songs oh i at at like s- the seven minute mark uh-huh. we are on needle drop number like four it's yes. insane it's insane it is wall-to-wall music <laughs> anytime someone is not talking uh-huh. we suddenly get a song it, every song sounds like chris daughtry as the lead singer of imagine dragons yeah just yep. it with like nonsense lyrics. Like, yes, baby, don't push me out the window. There's a yep. candle here. Like, <laughs> That's basically, what it is. You could tell me that it's the same song every time, and I would fucking believe you because I couldn't discern any of them. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I don't think these are real songs. I think these are like AI created songs. Well, I thought the same thing until there was like a Roik's up needle drop in the middle of the movie, uh, and I was like, what? Like, like artists I've heard of are on this soundtrack, and I looked up for the sequel. Well, there's like 35 songs on the soundtracks for those. Like it's it's wall to wall. The full song, by the way, yeah. we're doing the. It's a music video every two minutes. And like, if you get bored, don't worry. Another song is coming. It's like it's like the room. We have to let you are my rose play all the way through while they have sex. Yeah. yeah. Have you looked up some of those fucking song titles too? No. I'm sure they're terrible. I'm sure they're terrible. Oh my fucking god! Is it like suck suck it from the back? featuring X or it from the back. <laughs> um let's see. Some some of them uh feel it. Uh-huh. Good. I think that's the theme song for the movie. Yeah. It's hard for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Dark Room. Dark Room. <laughs> Guys <sighs> Could this be redeemed in no. the sense of like something like the disaster artist? No. Like you don't think so, right? There's there's no, no way that we could even parody this to the point where it would be something tangible. Oh, and and here she comes again. Of course. That music supervisor had a field day. You know they did. Uh-huh. I think that's where most of the budget must have went to, too. Cause again, it's listener, if you haven't watched the movie, I would say this. You don't have to. Please you don't. You do not have to. Not even like a highlights reel on YouTube or anything. There's nothing here. There's nothing happening. Like, unfortunately, the only thing that saves this movie, like, the performances are terrible. Yeah. The only thing that saves this movie is, without question, the lead actress is a gorgeous woman. Like, yeah. that's it. But uh. she's she's put in impossible situations that she then becomes an unlikable character. Like I was going to say the only good thing about this movie was, like, the giallo lighting in yes. some of the scenes. Like, when they go to his bedroom and it's just malignant all of a sudden. Uh. I was just going to say it becomes an A24 movie for a, a brief <laughs> moment with the bisexual lighting. Like, yeah. it's... 
Uh, there, but there's nothing that you don't have to watch the movie. We will run you through it. Trust me. You just please don't. Actually, I would say don't don't watch it because please don't watch this. You'll give Netflix some ideas that oh people will like this and they dig it. <sighs> yeah. So I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Okay, so we get introduced to Lara's boyfriend, who is a total fucking tool. Martin, Martin, Martin whatever. Who yeah. is watching TV, but with headphones, headphones on, on and his laptop open. Mm-hmm. Man is taking in all of the content. So <laughs> she goes to the bedroom because she's super horny. Yeah. He's not into it. Yeah. Cut to the villain of the movie uh, on a private jet who finds out some bad shits happen. And yeah, like, like we talked about, his, his this guy's big move is let me run, run my dirty thumbs around any woman's lips that are within reaching distance. That <laughs> activates them somehow. Yeah, that, that somehow turns them on. And he just violently, and I can't, I cannot ex- like express this enough. He yeah. violently mouth, he, well, just say it, he mouth raped her. Like I, I, yeah, he assaults this stewardess, and then it is played like she's cool with it. This movie posits that. It's fine if you get consent afterwards. Yep. Like, that is, that's like the thing, that's like his fucking move. Mm -hmm. She seems afraid of him, and then at the end of it, she gives him, like, a sly smile and walks away, and Mm -hmm. is like, it's played like, wow, what a romantic thing that just happened. But no, like, he just, he he just, she's doing her fucking job. Yes. And then he, he attacks her, essentially. And this is the, I mean, it's, it goes without saying the problematic nature of this movie, Mm -hmm. which is, I get that this is supposed to be some women's fantasy, right? But that's the thought behind it, but I don't know that that's true. Right, I mean, like this is the difference is it's a fantasy, right. not actual something you put film to. He's <laughs> he's positioned as this magnetic personality, but not only is this actor not interesting at all, but everything he does is repellent. Yeah, yeah. there's no. There's no redeeming qualities. There's yeah. not a part where, like, I don't know, he saves a kid from getting hit by a car in the streets or something. There's, there's no save the cat moment for this guy. Right. At all. He's just an asshole. No, and, he's a monster. Yeah. And in fact, like, some of the needle drops literally tell us, like, it's almost like the the music supervisor was like, I want people to know that I know what kind of movie this is. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's literally scenes where, like, it's meant to be a romantic scene between the two of them, but the music is telling us, be afraid of this person. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. And they're intercutting her masturbating with her vibrator to this guy violently mouth this woman and the thing that i appreciate about laura is she sets the mood before she masturbates uh-huh. she she turns on the blue lighting uh-huh. she puts on a silk nighty mm-hmm. but we're i mean she just like me for real yeah, yeah that's just how nathan does it i've seen it <laughs> which reminds me nathan what size nighty are you oh xl <laughs> xxl tight, tight. actually i mean it depends on if we're buying women's sizes or not i mean it's our christmas it's our christmas episode so you know i gotta i gotta start thinking about christmas gifts that, uh, that's true we forgot to mention that merry christmas everyone <laughs> Actually, uh, next week is our Christmas episode. Right, well, it'll come out the day after Christmas. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, technically. So this is the, like this is the gift you open the day before Christmas on oh, Christmas Eve. Boy. <laughs> Enjoy this big fucking sack of coal, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how I'm built, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's silk draped coal. That's right. It's it's soft but rough. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't know if this movie knows what it is. No. Because it's intercutting her having a pleasant private session with mm-hmm. this guy violently doing the shit. And then the music is just blaring. Right. It's like, it's fucking tonal whiplash. And like, I, it feels like what a bad fan fiction writer yep. thinks a woman wants. Yes. Yeah. Or what, yeah. what they think is a s- sexy fantasy. And in but fact, a, a woman uh, directed this movie. She co directed it. That blew my fucking mind. Yep. When I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, when I looked it up, I was like, how in the world? I know. I know. That's the most visceral reaction Nathan's ever had to anything on this show. I know. Question, would this movie be better if you replaced all the music with speed metal? Uh, I don't know that anything like, makes it. What if you replaced all the characters except for one with Muppets? Does that make it better? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Which character are you not replacing? Laura stays the same. Laura stays the same. The X is Miss Piggy. Oh my god. Who's the worst of the Muppets? Uh, Who could be the main guy? 
Animal? Massimo's Sam Eagle. <laughs> no, it's Cos it's Cosmo. He fucks chickens. Get, uh Gonzo. Gonzo. What did I say? I'm I'm in Seinfeld mode. Cosmo. What if it was a Swedish chef instead? <laughs> <laughs> Replace this movie with characters from Seinfeld yeah. and uh, Massimo's Kramer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just about to say he's gotta be, gotta be. Mario is the soup Nazi. Uh-huh. D- uh, Jerry could be the cousin Domenico. That's his cousin? I think so. I was gonna say Jerry's Laura. Oh, even better. Yeah, no, this movie's a lot. Uh-huh. Like, a lot, a lot. <laughs> we're, we're introduced to her boyfriend who, like, at, well, they go to dinner for her birthday. Mm-hmm. Everyone's dressed up except for Martine, who's wearing a tank top and camo shorts. Yep, I wrote that down. I'm like, th- so- You really pulled a DC on that one. <laughs> they really gave this guy at least some defining characteristics so uh-huh. you know he's not a good person. <laughs> camo shorts. <laughs> it looks like every hardcore kid I knew in 2014. Yep, he sure fucking does. And- God, yeah, he just sucks so fucking hard. And <laughs> Not as much as that stewardess. I, that was, see, that was my first note. I wrote down, I'm like, I don't know what the tone of this movie is. No. Am I supposed to laugh here? Am I supposed to cheer? What am I supposed to do? It gives you, and then that's the thing is it's barely a movie. Barely. It gives you nothing. Yeah, I wouldn't call this a movie. Uh, you're right. I, I Technically, does it plays all the way through, but there's, but there's no ending. There is no ending. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue that this is the first non-movie we've done on the show. Uh-huh. And I wouldn't say it played all the way through because... I fast forwarded through 80% of it. Sure. I, dude, I was skipping most of the sex scenes. Yeah. I was like getting. Uh, Which, when you do that, you only, like, I think there's 15 minutes of actual movie in here. Yeah. Imagine a TV edit of this. But, like, oh my I, God. I texted DC about an hour into this movie and I was like, I'm sick to my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, this movie made me feel bad. The only thing that saved this movie was A, I was not watching it alone because Priscilla was there. And yeah. B, we were laughing at the movie. Like, I, it was nervous laughing after a time sure, but I'm sure. like at least I can I realize that this is not a movie like I think Don't Worry Darling had more of an ending than this movie did <laughs> Whoa. I, I'm gonna put my foot down I think it does I will say I agree with Nathan my stomach hurt during this movie too but it was I think that had to do with all the beer and McDonald's from last night sure mm. so yeah this was this was the opposite of my last weekend <laughs> where like I got to like ease into the day with the two towers uh-huh. <laughs> like this was this was just like a, a rude awakening so she gets kidnapped. Uh huh. She's pretty calm about it at first. We hear his catchphrase. Oh my god! Are you lost, baby girl? Oh. Which he says a bunch of times, yep. and it never is not gross. I'm just gonna start randomly calling Nathan from an, like a unknown number. Oh my god! You, you act oh. like I oh. haven't called you BB <laughs> in text messages. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Me and Nathan have such an intimate text relationship. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm gonna say something controversial. I don't think this movie makes a whole lot of sense, guys. No. Because that's not not controversial i know she sees him at this birthday party it's yeah. clearly he's clearly not really there but how before he and, batman's away how and why that means something supernatural is occurring in this movie you think so it has to be, uh, she doesn't know him right how does she know him and he's there and he says his catchphrase there yeah and then he says it on in the castle oh i think he's following her but he clearly is the one who ordered the champagne for her table but you don't think he's physically in the garden there do you you yeah, do yeah oh my god oh my god i think i think it's just a badly shot scene yeah. oh that may be why it is because i know okay <laughs> Hold on. Because he does, he fully Batmans away into the fucking maze. Well, I, okay, I, I, you gotta give me a second. Hold on. Well, I mean, he does tell us that this is, he, he tells us that the plot is ridiculous because the first thing he says to her after she's like settled into the couch, he goes, what I'm about to tell you is so incredible. Yeah. And then he tells her about how he saw her as his heart stopped. And the flashback is shot as though she was looking down at him. Uh Uh-huh. Even though she was on the beach, like uh, hundreds of meters away. Well, he was (laughs) laying down bleeding from a gunshot wound. Yeah. And she takes his gun in the the modern day. And uh, this movie could have been much shorter if she just put a fucking bullet in his head. And I wish she had. I wish she had too. (laughs) But- Okay, so she's she's like, oh, I got to get back to my boyfriend. Oh, uh-huh. we didn't even mention she hates her boyfriend. Oh yeah, he went on a he went on a day trip without her because she was hungover. Uh huh. And then she pushes him into the pool. She uh-huh. decides to roam the streets of Italy at night. She gets kidnapped. Italy, Italy. <laughs> and <laughs> Massimo shows her some photos of her boyfriend railing some other woman. These, as, as we learn later, it was fully only anal. Yeah, I think. Yep, <laughs> that's what she says. She's like, you put your penis in another woman ass and i was like you can tell from that photo yeah and she she enunciates the another woman's ass like it's uh-huh. yeah 
But another one, another woman. Uh, the Jesus angles, Christ. the angles on these blackmail photos are fantastic. The yeah. camera is right there. Totally, like, you expect a Gucci logo at the bottom. Yeah, it's it's implied that like this was all staged, right? Like he drugged Martin, right? It is. It is. Yeah, I, that's what I. That's what I thought too. It's implied that he drugged him, delivered him a prostitute or something, yeah. and then shot those photos to try to make her leave her boyfriend. Yeah. Again, also like. So gaslighting yeah. and blackmail yeah. and we're roofing other people and what the fuck is this movie? He's ticking off every single box Ooh. of red flags yeah. and problematic stuff. And this is where we get the plot of the movie laid out. You've got a year to fall in love with me mm-hmm. or I'll let you go. Yeah. He says if he says if you're not in love with me by your next birthday, you can leave. Yes. What a gift. Yeah. And then he says, I won't touch you unless you give me permission. That's a lie. He immediately grabs her by the throat yep. and throws her against a wall. Yep. He tells her to suck an ice cube. And then she says, suck it yourself, which I got to, I did get a little bit it's of a good, good. Yeah. But then, so this is a plot from a movie that I would expect from something like in the seventies or something, <laughs> not in 2020. It feels like old school exploitation that is trying to shoot. Like it's not exploitation. It's like the old, like, like noirs where you just grab a woman by the wrist and then smack her around and she'd fall in love with you. <laughs> I mean, not even that. This feels like a Jess Franco or Ken Russell film like uh-huh. there is just something fucking like outdated about everything in this movie and it's not played for something like a basic instinct no. or like any of those erotic thrillers from the 80s and 90s this is just it's cruel the whole movie is cruel. yeah i think that is the perfect word to describe it i i could not so you're supposed to root for this character to get away from this guy to realize he's bad news but then she becomes a villain and it's like so what am I supposed to do as the as the the viewer? Mm-hmm. Like, do I root for her now? Like, oh, I fully expect like in the sequel, she's just ordering hits and shit. She's, she's got it. It's got to be like a Godfather thing. She ascends to the throne again. DC, <laughs> watch. Get back to us. Yeah, <sighs> I might. I might. There's something I hated about myself, but there's something inherent in me that I'm like, I gotta, I gotta see what happens. I know nothing's gonna happen. I know that's the point. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, my curiosity outweighs my, my loathing at this point. Can I tell you what I'm most curious about? Uh huh. Them keeping this guy downstairs in like a passion play set uh-huh. <laughs> or the, the original Broadway set for the last five years. Like right. it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So, so this is supposed to be a moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Hades Town. <laughs> This is supposed to be a moment where, oh, look, this guy's not so bad. He's killing his own family member because he was doing something with children, right? Yeah. Sure, that's great, but he's it doesn't make up for all the other horrible shit he's doing. He's also strapped to, like... A, an old stone pillar. Like, I thought it was one of those tables like where you had throwing knives, you would spin the girl on the wheel. Is that what it is? Because That's I what was, it looked like to me. <laughs> I expected Dr. Kennard from Hellraiser 2 to walk in. Like, it was the craziest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Yeah. No, I mean, there's, okay, there's there's a difference with having an anti-hero of something like Walter White. Right. Like, when he when he runs over the gang members that are going to shoot Jesse, yeah, that's, yes, he's doing something good. Right. But, but he's a monster. But he's still a monster. Yep. You should still not be rooting for him. And I think this movie misinterprets that. Okay, you're talking about a show that has more nuance than any other television series. Right. There's no nuance in this movie. They don't know the meaning of the word. No. We just go from scene to scene. I know. I, I'm giving an extreme example. But it's it's it's, it's a one to one at this point. Like I know erotic thrillers who use subtlety, and they're all cowards. <laughs> <laughs> that made me think about something. Could Verhoeven or somebody like that do something with this? Anything at all? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Verhoeven would at least inject some kind of wink at the audience. Right. There'd be some. He'd you'd be he'd be in on the joke too. Right. Yeah. Because I this is played as such sincerity but uh-huh. i don't feel like like i feel like the editor and the music supervisor think it's a joke yes but the directors are like this is 100 percent serious absolutely and those clashing tones are what makes for it's kind of funny like it's terrible whoever did the subtitles is in on the, is in on the joke oh yeah <laughs> i don't recommend watching this movie with subtitles because mm. it's like it's like watching it's the same subtitles as like stranger things like tentacles slurping oh, and withering yeah oh i could not imagine the boat scene oh, oh my god like, oh my it's god it's just like it's like parentheses, squishy noises. Uh-huh. Like, oh. And then occasionally just words that are wrong. Yeah. Yep. 
But yeah, th- this whole thing about oh, you've got a Laura's got a weak heart never comes into play really. No, she, but she is constantly fainting, constantly fading to black and waking up the next morning. Mm-hmm. This guy, the main guy. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it's uh, someone being shirtless around a bunch of other people that are <laughs> in nice clothes yeah. or in clothes in general. Yeah, like this guy, he's like on the phone the next morning. That's why, it's why me and DC don't hang out in person very often. Yeah, I, I'm just like put a shirt on. God damn, like I can't stand it. I play pool better shirtless. I'm <laughs> sorry. What are, you, what are you talking about? You were dressed as Laszlo basically the last time we went and played pool. You were to the nines. Uh, if you're going to play pool, you better wear shorts. <laughs> I, that's what I did. I had to get some, you know, some leverage. First the- off, DC, you're <laughs> fucking welcome. I like how you say I was dressed to the nines. I was just wearing a jacket. I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wearing a long coat. <laughs> It's a sign of status to Dustin. Anybody wearing a petticoat, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Same. Same. I'm just like, what are you, Scott Weiland? What are you doing? And I'm like, it's LA. It's it's 80 degrees outside. Uh, but no, it's fine. You, you do you. I I actually am impressed you're able to wear that many layers and that dark clothing in, in Los Angeles. Again, I was one jacket and a t-shirt. I, know, I, know. I wrote down in all caps, a shopping montage. I couldn't believe it. Uh huh. I could not believe it. And apparently there's two I missed. Oh, I, you know what? I think this makes five, actually, oh now that I'm God. thinking about it. Honestly, the shopping montage was like, oh, it's a movie now. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, that was the first movie scene. But this is, this. I think this is the first time we really see her limitations as an actress, because she runs away, she tries to tell the cops that she's been kidnapped, they see Massimo and kind of skedaddle, Yep. and the look on her face is just sort of like, dang it. Yep. Well, she does a couple of times. She thinks like she's got like the upper hand. Uh-huh. She's got the smirk and, and then she's instantly fooled and she's like, no. Well, and every <laughs> every time she like she's like, I got the upper hand. Uh-huh. He chokes her. She's like, ah, oh, fuck. Yes. Yes. Like, you didn't see that coming? She she tell, she tell like stares at his dick and then says, you won't touch me without permission. And then he grabs her by the throat. But then she reasserts her dominance in the situation. And then the song tells us that you made a monster. Mm -hmm. So what are we trying to know from any scene to scene? Like, I I can't, I cannot track what anybody's thought process or motivation is in front of or behind the camera. I I should say too, I, like when I watched this movie, I watched the movie. I put my phone down. I was taking notes, but I was just like, you sat your white ass down and listened. (laughs) I did. I did. I I didn't like what I heard this time. This time I didn't like it, but I tried, I tried really hard. And I did the same thing. I was like, I I'm, I'm, actively angry at this movie but i i need to pay attention if i'm going to make any points about it yeah and i like during the shopping montage i wrote down i was like i cannot believe i have to endure two hours two hours of this shit Uh uh-huh so here's here's another question i have too why the arbitrary timeline of 365 days right why like it, it comes to nothing. It means nothing. Like you think there were more than there was more than one draft of any of this. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, I think they just had a title and they just went with it. Like, uh, there you go. Yeah, what, uh, one year would have been a better title. I finished my screenplay. Seventeen months. Right? <laughs> you know, the original title was three six nine. Damn you, fine. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the applause. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> give it, go. give it, give it to him. There it was. Okay. I didn't feel like I earned that. I thoroughly, I enjoyed that more than this movie. Thanks, man. Jackass. Sorry, I had to balance it out. <laughs> they put her on this private jet and they're like, we're going to take you. You got to come with me. I got to go to my, one of my clubs or whatever. Uh-huh. This scene, I get, this is why I don't know if it's supposed to be intentionally funny or or if they're just not in on the joke. But mm-hmm. he, remember, he keeps saying, I won't touch you unless you give me permission. It's a lie. Right. He starts uh, fondling her on this jet. Ugh. Again, her. her She's. She's tied up in the jet. Yep. And he's, I don't know, two feet away from his cousin and who I'm guessing is his uncle, the the bigger guy, the older guy. Mario. Mario, yeah. I'm assuming that's his uncle. I don't know. But he fondles her and then goes to the back Mm -hmm. and rubs his hand on Domenico's, like, jacket. Yeah, I missed that. Oh, my God. I Priscilla and I both noticed it. We're like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, my Uh, God. (laughs) Oh, I should admit you too. We didn't play the trailer, but that's because it's it's in it's in Polish and Italian anyway. So what's the matter? Eh, fuck it. That's fine. Let me see if I can find the scene real quick though, because I almost leapt out of my chair. You really <laughs> don't need to. Well, they, the the club scene is after 
the scene where he ha- he receives oral sex from another woman in front of her. Oh, we got to talk about the bedroom scene. Oh, my God. Okay. It's, I mean, his idea of seduction is to take off his towel in front of her and then say, take it. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when that somehow doesn't work. Oh, I guess we, sh- yeah, because they were in, they were showering together. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's, that's where he asks her. Why are you looking at it? Yep. Don't you want to touch it? Oh! I-, I laughed so fucking hard too, God. But he he says, "I'm going to show you what you're missing." Mm-hmm. Then chains her to the bed, and then she watches him get, get a blowjob. Get a blowjob. Yeah. But he doesn't give back, so he's telling her, "You know what you're missing is me not having any clue how to please a woman." Yeah, yeah. No, Nancy Reagan comes in in her uh, dominatrix <laughs> outfit, and uh, this woman's whole job is to cuck this other woman Ugh. who doesn't want to be there in the first place. And I'm just like, if you really want to piss him off, you, you close your eyes. Yeah. Don't look at him. There you go. And she, so the, the, but the other woman sucks this, sucks this guy's dog and then just leaves. Like, but then the movie, like, the movie plays it like <laughs> this actually turned Laura on. Dude, look, 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 right there. Just rubs his hand on. That's cash. insane. <laughs> <laughs> the movie acts like this turned Laura on, uh-huh. and then he's like, but I'm not going to touch you until you want me to, uh-huh. and I'm just like, fuck you, movie. Like, what are- <laughs> Fuck you, movie. So, we didn't mention, he's got her handcuffed to the bed, and also, this thing on her legs where the more she moves, the more it opens her legs. Yeah, oh my bar. god. Yeah. I don't. I don't like to think that I'm a square when it comes to this shit. But uh-huh. Jesus fucking Christ! No, it's I, fucked up. I mean, it's, it's so- awful. Like, it's not. It's not that you're being a prude. It's that you recognize this as toxic and disgusting yeah. behavior. The, fantasies should be fantasies for a reason. And if you're gonna like safe words, you got to do something. <laughs> well, no, and that's the thing. Is like I remember when you know when this movie came out, and then when when Fifty Shades came out, like people kept comparing it to Secretary, mm-hmm. and like Secretary is a film about a consensual BDSM relationship, sure, that takes into account you know safe words yes. and and power dynamics, and and not crossing those boundaries. Uh, out of a sense of mutual respect, and literally none of that exists in this film. Yeah, I'm it, sorry, movie. I can't call this a film. Dang, yeah, that was a play <laughs> move. Please, I would like to think that this works better in a paperback or something like that. You get in an airport because yeah, it, maybe from 1945. There you go. Uh, there you go. Or something like Dear Dear Penthouse. Yes. Anything like, but this this is not. I don't want to keep harping on it, but it's so bad. No, it is. It is a fan fiction. Like it is something. It is is something that someone would write on fucking Wattpad without yeah. actually ever having had sex before. <laughs> yes. And that's me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan did it to himself that time. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. The fact that all this is happening in front of this guy's giant mural of himself with, with a, a tiger. tiger. She asks if it's a Michelangelo or a late period Caravaggio and, <laughs> and the way she delivers the line, I can't tell if she's being sarcastic. Oh, it's a sarcastic line. It, it, I, I, it is written that way. It yeah. is not delivered that way. Yeah. It, it's like in Django when he, he tries to speak French oh, to Leo, sure. Leo and he's like, oh, don't speak French if he doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, like, I, fa- I have a feeling this is like, and I'm going to just throw someone under the bus here. I feel like this is like an Elon Musk fantasy, oh, like boy. someone who's so powerful and rich that clearly has no fucking swagger at all. Uh-huh. And that's how the Silver Linings playlist got kicked off Twitter. <laughs> And he's like, this is what I, this is how I manage to get women. You find us on Hive Social. Yep. Reach out on Mastodon. Get on the, all the other. I mean, I've been <laughs> trying to get DC kicked off Twitter for like three years. So <laughs> still, still going strong, baby. Unfortunately, I know. <laughs> Um, so they go to this club. He tells her to get dressed and come to the club, then gets mad that she fully dressed for the club. Yep, yep, 100%. And then this guy tries to pick her up and says, I'm going to fuck you so hard you won't be able to sit. Ugh. And I'm like, has that ever worked for any... It's it's the same thing with unsolicited dick pics. Uh-huh. Has it ever worked? Has it... I want one person to come forward and be like, actually, some woman to be like, yeah, he said, I didn't ask for it, didn't know him. Audience, don't, <laughs> we don't want to know, actually, yeah. don't. No, I just want to know if it worked. I don't want to know the rest of the story, but like, it, it did it? No, that's never worked. That's the whole point. It's never fucking worked. I mean, I'm so confused about everybody's motivation in this sequence. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, she's flirting with Massimo, telling him how easy it would be to have sex with her in that skirt. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, do you, what do you, what do you want, Laura? What? 
yeah, what is the character's goals? What's her ambitions? What is she l- striving for? I don't- the lyrics in the song playing at the club are, and I wrote down, music, 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 cigarette. Yep, yep, it sure is. That's, that's what I'm saying. These are not real songs. Because, of course, there's music playing over this entire scene. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. In the club, which is also playing music. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not a real song. It's not real music. No. This is AI-generated bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah, you would think her motivation is, let me play head games with this guy. Sure. And then I'll get the upper hand, and that never happens. Well, and again, it's it's partly the writing and partly a fault of the performance. Mm-hmm. It's just very strange, up to and including when Massimo goes full Johnny Legs at the beginning of Romeo plus Juliet oh my pulls God. out the dual pistols. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep. On a full table full of people. Yeah, we get no resolution to that. We just cut. We just cut away from that. Well, we find out later, and I quote, I shot his hands. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. But and she's mad at him yep. for that. Yep. Yep. Now we get the boat scene. Boy. And this shit is insane <sighs> because there's so many wild ass lines here that I wrote down. Mm-hmm. So they get into an f- argument on this boat. He pushes her overboard. As you guys mentioned, she can't swim. He saves her. His One of his first lines to her after pulling her back on the boat is, why are you so disobedient? Ugh. And I'm like, is this guy for real? Yeah. You kidnapped her. You literally, <laughs> Yes. And then she says, I won't be anymore. Uh-huh. I won't do it again. Oh. And then she she touches his board shorts uh-huh. and says, you're wet. Oh, my God. I wrote that down, too. He's, Jesus she's like, you're Christ. Wet. I'm like, well, yeah, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and then they finally hook up. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Yes. Right. I, I don't know how to say it without throwing up. But, like, the song that plays over this scene I know. is about cheating and not forgiving him yep yep <laughs> like there's no they're not paying attention at all to these songs and, and before that though i i just wrote down because the sex scene starts and it, I, obviously I don't, I don't know where it's going but the first thing he does is what's he do he makes her get him off like suck him off and uh-huh. i'm like this dude's the king of just getting his dick sucked i thought that's all this movie was going to be is just dick sucks <laughs> i'm like that's all that's happened at this point <laughs> well the original title was 365 sucks <laughs> 365 dick sucks yeah But, so this sex scene, I think it's at least five minutes long. It's a montage of them fucking everywhere on the boat. Everywhere on the boat. They are going to get so sunburned. Uh Uh-huh. That, the top of that boat's gotta be hot. Like, and that... There's drone footage, and I'm like, where is everyone else on this boat? Do you, are, are they? Is this one session, or are they? And they're just moving around to all the different places. And, and according to the subtitles, this song is called "I See Red" by Everybody Loves an Outlaw. It's not a real song. Not a real song. Not a real. I don't care if, uh, if that's the band listening. You're not a real band. I'm sorry. You do. They, they used a name generator like Childish Gambino. Yes, <laughs> but I. <sighs> I don't know. Dude, there's so much crazy. Like, do, do Mario and Domenico see them two coming? Well, that's what I was wondering, too, is like, <laughs> where does everybody else have to go below deck while they come up to the top? Yeah. And like, Oh, shit. They're on the top. Now we got to go to the bunk. Oh, now they're in the bunks. Oh, we got to go. And, and now, <laughs> now we are fully into, they act like they've been dating for years. Yep. She's like making jokes with him. He's inviting her to a ball. And she's like, oh, fuck, I have nothing to wear. Nathan, Nathan, and, Nathan I'm sorry. I st- uh, we, we can't keep going. I still have notes about the boat. Oh, please, scene. please. <laughs> I, I, pre- I appreciate you trying to move it along, but I, there's still some questions I have. I think I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the wide shot of them going at it doggy style with the drone footage oh. in the front of the boat. It's incredible. Like, it's genuinely funny. <laughs> it's like the sex scene in, in They Came Together. Oh, oh, I thought it was more like Team America. Like, sure. it's just so fucking ridiculous. Same energy. Or or uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Like, yep. it's fucking ridiculous. As much as, literally like, female frontal nudity as we get in this movie, nary of a real dick. No no dicks. We get some, some shaft here and there, some balls here and there. It's all prosthetics that we're going. <laughs> some balls. Balls here and there. Some balls here and there. Nathan's dad would not enjoy this movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I am not a fan of any movie where the actor is actually putting his real mouth on a woman's chest. No. I, that always creeps me out. We, no. I was listening to We Hate Movies talking about Highlander 3. Oh. And they were just like, Christopher Lambert just straight up putting nipples in his mouth. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Oh. This is a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ugh. I I had the same note. I was like, "Wow, we're just letting him do this." And then, I mean, we the, the montage ends, but we're still on the boat. Uh huh. And then he emerges from the ocean, puts his dripping wet saltwater mouth all over hers, and Oof. she's like, mm, "Yes." And I'm like, "That is the worst offense so far this movie has shown uh-huh. in terms of the romance. It's fucking disgusting." Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. Look, I know I've said some controversial things about 69ing on this show. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Can you let me get that clean? Say that one more time. I know I've said some <laughs> controversial things on this show about 69ing. Uh huh. But there's nothing <laughs> sexy about the beach. Nope. Nope, it's terrible. It's all terrible. Okay, we, we we can agree about that. I 100%. I don't like sand. It's rough and everywhere. It gets everywhere. But <laughs> even still, I don't know. No, the sun's right there. It's hot. Look, I, I always I always romanticize the idea of, of like a kiss on the beach. Ugh. But it's always just salty and sandy. You could be chugging mouthwash on the beach and you still would smell and, and I taste am. Na- yeah I, i'm not allowed to buy alcohol so I, no. I make country boys make do you bring some crest <laughs> and put a straw on the bottle but like it should be mentioned i've been drinking wine this entire recording so like that's <laughs> oh that's fancy why. boy over here mr rich boy could afford some wine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm sipping on uh some listerine while we do this one but you got one of your 12 dollar coronas left over uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> But no, y- nothing about the beach. You can't make it sexy. Uh, Nathan really got into this movie. He's like, I'm going to sit down, light some candles, <laughs> turn the blue lights on, put uh-huh. on 365 days, pour me a glass of wine. No, that here's the thing. There was nothing sexy about this movie. So yeah. I, I'm trying to make this recording, you know, a, as as pleasurable as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Should we, should we, should we all talk <laughs> More like that. Now, see, this, <laughs> I, this I appreciate. So, yeah. I'm... Can we get to the montage yes. of Camp Stylus? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. Well, I got. I have one question before we get there. Because, uh-huh. we, yes, we go into another montage. Oh, we'd, we'd, lo- we'd love to answer that question for you, Dustin. Not liking this. <laughs> not, not, no, not liking this at all. Not no, like you. this. <laughs> oh, exactly like this. <laughs> the fantasy of this movie only works for... It, it, like this wouldn't work if this guy was poor right <laughs> if he's if he's some guy some homeless guy living in his van and he kidnaps her and he's like oh you'll fall in love with me you got one year well and that's what i'm <laughs> saying like the movie posits i mean it is like a christian gray scenario right uh-huh. like we're we're meant to think oh this is like exciting and and desirable because he can buy her whatever mm-hmm. the second half of the movie is just like look at all the things he can buy her can you forgive him for being an absolute absolute fucking monster mm-hmm. for the rest of the movie it, it's trying to do the michelle pfeiffer and scarface situation but yeah. it's not working it's not working at all this guy worse than scarface yeah i want to see the poor version of this movie yeah <laughs> i would love to see that that sounds fascinating yeah come over here and lay down on this oh. wet cardboard oh. while while i serve you up. Yeah, imagine <laughs> he kidnaps her and he takes her to just like an apartment that has just a couch and an Xbox. Not not like a new like like an original Xbox. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Or like a PlayStation 1. Uh, it's just it's the the TV is on a cardboard box. There, there's no rug. There's nothing on the walls. It is it is insane though. This movie does act like oh sure, you should be excited about this. You yeah. should be happy for her. The, the whole movie's uh the whole moral of the story is just wait it out. Like <laughs> You'll you'll probably fall in love with him. Yeah, I mean it's what Mally it's what Mally said last week. His clue is this movie's moral is sometimes Stockholm syndrome works. Yeah, like what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not it's it's almost like it's a bad movie. <laughs> it's a terrible movie. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. Yeah, and I've seen both Birdemics. Um, <laughs> I mean, like after all this, he asks her. He's like, "Do you mind if I ask you to dance?" Ugh. And I'm like, yeah. "Now you care." Yeah, and we get this fucking. Uh, Gomez Morticia light dance scene for uh, an hour and a half. Mi amor. Which is the next time I wrote What Are We Doing in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> then we get introduced to the ex that goes literally nowhere. You don't think she ordered the kill? Uh, yeah, but we don't see that. Well, see, now, DC, you're going to have to confirm, but I wonder if she comes back in the sequel. I bet she does. If she does it, that would be the funniest fucking thing of all time. <laughs> if she has, they're not even mentioning her. Oh. 
All right, so he sends some shit goes down apparently, uh-huh. and they send her back to Poland. No explanation, nothing. Don't worry, listener, it doesn't come to anything. Back to Poland with you. Yeah, if you've never seen the movie, don't worry, nothing comes of that. Good news, everybody. Anna returns somehow. Anna returns <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I will say this movie does have a lot in common with Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like it wasn't. No one asked for Ray and Kylo. Mm-hmm. No one wanted that. No, no one. And he's also abusing her, Ugh. and uh, it works. Yeah. The Stockholm Syndrome works in that movie, too. Oh, my God. If the, if in the sequel to this, he brings her back to life with a kiss. Uh, oh. oh, no, no. He's going to blow up a, a bunch of other planets full of about 8 billion people, <laughs> and then she'll fall in love with him. That's like, right. Because you forget that happens in Force Awakens, and then you get all the way to End of Rise of Skywalker. I will say Anna <laughs> has my favorite outfit of the movie. She's dressed like Emma Frost. Oh, my God. Uh, just yeah. in- introduces herself as the first in real love of Massimo, and uh-huh. it's we learn uh, she hated Laura before she ever met her because, and I quote, Massimo says, your portraits have been hanging in my house for years. Yep. What? So did he paint her from memory? I don't know. I don't, this, again, this is why I think there's some supernatural shit going on in this movie. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't have fucking answers. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't think anyone does. Shit. But we go to, to Poland. She goes back to her friend. Olga. They have a little girl time, which uh-huh. I did like this this scene. This was actually kind of fun because they're all over the apartment. It's the one scene that's well edited yeah. because they like they, they keep doing this gag of smash cutting to when she tells her a little bit more of the story uh-huh. and they're getting progressively drunker and uh-huh. less excited about it. Uh-huh. It's, it's actually well done. But here's, here's another line that it's just... Y- you can't have it in this movie. I didn't want it, but it happened. Oh, that's bad. But I was going to say. Which is loaded. I was going to say when uh, Olga asked, did God mold his dick? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And Laura leads in and says, the devil did. And I'm oh, like. Oh, God. Man, you know the screenwriters were patting themselves on the back for that one. That follows Olga making a joke about Massimo being a special needs kid. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. right. And then the weird thing is she goes, did. <laughs> And this is just how my brain processes visual information. She says, did God mold his dick too? And Laura picks up an ashtray. Mm-hmm. And for half a second, I thought she was going to be like, it's this wide. <laughs> and I'm so glad that that didn't happen. Oh, man, that would have been good. But here's the thing. We see Laura naked. Constantly. Her whole body throughout this whole movie. I got to see this guy's dong. Okay. I got to see what he's working with. I'll get the producer on the phone. Thank I you. Do, I don't know what you want. It's not fair. I swear to God, if I do watch these other two movies and uh, there's there's not uh, any dong from this dude, yeah. I might tell you guys not to come to school tomorrow. Like, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. It's not going to be fair. She tells Olga that he's a mafia don, and Olga's, like, freaking out. She's downing a bottle of wine. Uh-huh. And then Laura says, the worst part is they keep me in the dark about everything. And I'm like, <laughs> no, the worst part. that is not the worst part. The worst part is that he fucking kidnapped yeah, you. he basically you right. multiple times at this point like it's not that's the worst part he's a monster yeah so speaking of that we cut to the, the club the ex-boyfriend's there uh-huh oh yeah we, we got, forgot to mention she has changed her hair there's no establishing shot of that new hair color so uh-huh. it took me a minute to realize that was still laura uh-huh. literally one of my notes is so she's blonde now yep. yeah they're blonde now they're blonde now <laughs> <laughs> they go to the spa where her friend Darius says, why do you wake me up in the middle of the night? Yep. It's 1 p.m. Yep. What? I don't know. Don't know. But the funny thing is, like, in movies when people try to be incognito and they dye their hair, it only makes you look more out of place. Because uh-huh. this blonde is the blondest blonde to ever blonde. The blondest blonde to ever blonde. Uh-huh. Marilyn Monroe's got nothing on it. It's super <laughs> blonde, but they apparently... They made an artistic move to uh, leave her roots looking ratty as shit, yep, though. Yep, yep, yep. She also t- says she got a promotion at work. How? Oh, yeah, what? what? When did she? Yes, what? What? How? what? Has she been teleworking? <laughs> I, I need to work for this company. You don't show up for months and you get a promotion. Wow. Mm-hmm. Incredible. But that comes to nothing. That's also where you find out that she works in a hotel. Because uh-huh. up to that point, no fucking clue. Not a clue at all. But all she's doing at this point is just girl time, all girl boss hours, like go get our nails done, go get our hair done, getting champagne brought to us and wine while we're getting our shit done. There's there's a cutaway in the hot tub where they seem to be singing along to Wanna Be by the Spice Girls, yep. but the production couldn't afford it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. 
And then they cut to this club. The ex-boyfriend returns and he's trying to explain, hey, I was set up. I, I don't know. And she's like, well, you I still passed out. Yep. I st- you still fucked another woman. He follows her back to his apartment. Uh-huh. Red flag uh, number 2000, Laura. You don't, if some guy's following you, don't go back to your house. Right. <laughs> go to Starbucks. Go to any, any public well-lit place, but don't go back to your house. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyways, Massimo's there. Michael Myers style. Mm-hmm. Just sitting in the dark. Martin, the Beck's boyfriend, leaves. They have sex, but here's the thing. I didn't like it uh, in American Horror Story when when Adam Levine had to wet his fingers before he got it in. I don't like seeing it in this movie either. I think I have the opposite of a king. I have blocked that out. Yeah. Dustin only does it dry. Yeah. We've learned. Yeah. What? What's so... (laughs) This argument... Gloss right over that. (laughs) This argument that they have is so baffling to me because she's like, do you know what I've been through? And I was like, yes, he's the one who kidnapped you. Yep. And then she goes, you're a fucking egoist. And I'm like, it's wild that a movie about this subject matter would have to manufacture different drama. Uh Like, she could have an argument with him about, like, you haven't earned me being in love with you. Mm -hmm. But instead, we we have to fight about her just not knowing what his business is. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so here's... This is the wildest shit ever. They have their sex scene. Uh, they do the full standard hotel thing up against the glass. <laughs> Wait, it's the sta- standard. Oh, you don't know about this store? Oh my god, the standard hotel is known because they have glass, giant glass windows like that for people having sex against the windows. Uh huh. And a couple has fallen out of the windows before. Yep. Shit. Yeah. Oh, so you mean the standard? Uh, so when you said the standard hotel thing, I thought you were. I thought you meant like when you go to a hotel, no, you gotta no. fuck against the glass. <laughs> Oh, yeah. When I go to a hotel, I don't know how you guys do it, but when I go to a hotel... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> put it right on the glass. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm with you. Now I now it makes sense. Uh, Classic hotel behavior. But they cut to the next morning. I thought this was going to be the end of the movie. Uh-huh. Because it, like, it seemed like things were wrapping up. Yeah. I pushed pause. There's 10 minutes left, right? Uh-huh. She wakes up with an engagement ring on her finger. Yes. Because he can't even let her decide to wear it. Nope. Or propose. Uh Uh-huh. But just running down real quickly what all happens in the next 10 minutes. (laughs) So much. So much. She finds out she's pregnant. Uh Uh-huh. He meets her parents. They have the wedding. They do a wedding dress montage. Someone else's wedding. Yes. Whose wedding is this? Who fucking knows? But they do all that, and then they still have time to Princess Diana her at the end. Like, a lot happens at the end of this movie. We get a, yeah, we get a fashion montage where she's picking out different outfits. Then we get a wedding dress try-on scene. First of all, that wedding dress is one of the worst things I've ever fucking seen. It's It's pretty bad. It's terrible. Off screen, it's revealed he told her no one from Poland can come to the wedding. Yep. Yep. That's not even a conversation we get to see. Yep. The pregnancy reveal is just kind of a throwaway line, too. Uh huh. Because they're arguing, her, her and her friend are arguing on the beach. When they go in to this random wedding and he meets her parents, uh huh. What she's wearing to someone else's wedding <laughs> is the most insulting thing I think I've ever seen. I actually missed it. Oh my God. Let me pull it up. Because normally I'm the fashion uh, correspondent on this show. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, well, it's like, you know, you don't wear white to someone else's wedding. Sure. Like, that's, a, that's a known thing. But sure, like, sure. holy shit, let me pull it up. Because it, my my jaw dropped, and I was like, this is probably the most offensive thing she's done in this movie, is what she wore to this fucking wedding. At this point, I was like, this is like, what if we made a modern day James Bond movie, Okay, but we took out all the plot, all the action, all the gunplay, and it was just the sex scenes turned up to 11. Yeah. That's this movie. <laughs> That's what this movie is. I, I gotta say, oh, that shot of them... Hugging and smiling on the beach, her and Olga. Yeah. If you pull this movie up on Netflix, that is- Oh, no. Get fucked. No, that's not the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. Oh, God. It's it's like, it, it is like the, it, it looks like a beaches style, like, rom-com. Yeah. <laughs> with these two gal pals. Yeah. It's insane. Okay, so, yeah, I, I don't know whose wedding this is. No idea who this woman- No fucking clue. Look, this is what she wore to someone's wedding. Good for her. Look at this shit. Good for her. That's a nightclub outfit if I- I've ever seen one. <laughs> you know, I just realized Massimo is like 
Bobo Frank Grillo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this the, the mom should have been Jennifer Coolidge. Holy shit, can you imagine? Cuz look look at this woman. That would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> or Charo. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Would have would have made this movie uh, at least a plus 1% at least. <laughs> A lot is happening in this movie. And that's when you find out that all this took place in less than two months. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because Olga, Olga's like, two months? You've only known him for two months. Are you kidding me? Yep. And we find out she's pregnant. Yeah. Which means a lot's happened in the two months and very quickly. Yeah, it means she fell in love with him within at least a week. Uh Uh-huh. And then got pregnant and then started to show or took a pregnancy test. Like, it's a lot. It's just... It's so much happening. I Well, I think in the translation of the title... (laughs) to English, um, there was some mistranslation, because uh-huh. I think it was supposed to be called 365 Minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Andrew Lloyd Webber did a first pass on it. And it was, <laughs> this was going to be a musical, but it didn't work out so well. <laughs> it should be noted, when I, when I mentioned to my wife that we were covering this movie. My wife. She yeah, real my, my wife. She <laughs> didn't realize what the movie was. She's like, oh wait, is that the James Franco movie where he gets stuck in a rock? Oh my God. <laughs> oh better hey, better better movie. Oh better movie. man, I wish Massimo got stuck in a rock. <laughs> what if that's how the third movie ends? He falls he he goes for a hike. Oh, shit. Holy shit. The, the actually the other 10 months of the year is just him stuck in a rock <laughs> <laughs> but instead of his arm it's his penis oh there's your sequel that really gives new meaning to the phrase stuck between a rock and a hard place uh, look at you bravo bravo Woo! you know what yeah that's deserved we're just throwing these applauses out <laughs> it's like candy in this episode so we get this call they are gonna kill Laura. I don't know who the fuck they are. Yeah, we don't know who they is. Assuming it's the ex, but who could fucking know? Right. But yeah, so Miley, this is the end of the movie, and this is your pick. I'm making you recap this fucking end. Okay, uh, they're gonna kill Laura. Her car drives into a tunnel. It doesn't come out the end. That, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I, I would chastise you for not putting in the effort, but that's it. It's literally it. Massimo gets the news because Mario shows up and just kind of shrugs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. Which is is about as much effort as they put into writing the script. But <laughs> Ma- Massimo takes that to be the absolute worst thing imaginable could have just happened. Like, he starts crying immediately. He falls to his knees. Yeah. Massimo, you have herpes. <gasps> no! <laughs> it's not played as anything. Like, yeah. they drive into this tunnel. She says, I got some news to tell you, which she's going to tell him she's pregnant. They don't come out the other end of the tunnel. There's no car wreck sound. There's no gunfire sound. Nothing. Nothing. We see a police car out parked outside the tunnel. Yep blocking the street and then we just cut to the a shot of the ocean and yeah. boats like sailing and that's that's fucking it that's it that's all there's so many unanswered questions what the fuck was her heart condition uh-huh. what did happen to him to get that bruise who the fuck is anna i got i guys i gotta watch the sequel <laughs> i gotta know well, you you do that honey like i'm not <laughs> i don't fucking think it's, i don't think fucking think i will it's not gonna be worth it but i'll be damned i gotta fucking know <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm just pulling up both the leads here. They're IMDb's. Yeah, the main actress, Lara, she's only been one of the things. She was in one episode of a TV show, and then she did these three movies. The guy, the main guy, Massimo, he's... Oh, wow, he's worked. Well, he's done, huh? he's done a couple of his own music oh, videos. Oh, his own music videos. Yeah. Yes. And then, yeah, just a couple little films here. I mean, these could be huge films. I just don't know about it, but... Yeah. He's done 16 acting credits. Three of them are these movies, and then, like, four of them are his music videos. Ugh. So yeah, I I I I don't I don't know what else to say. I <sighs> it's a lot. It's it's a little, but somehow it's a lot. This movie really hurt my my brain, guys. I'm gonna be honest. You better say hurt your guts because <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massimo got in there and rearranged him a little bit. Jesus oh. Christ, I fucking <laughs> hated this movie. <laughs> I did too. I. Let's go ahead and jump to recommendations. Never in your fucking life. Don't even look at it. No. Don't even look at it on Netflix. Don't watch the trailer. This, this is the opposite of just look at it. Do everything you can to avoid looking at it. <sighs> it's bad. It's just a. It's bad. It's offensive. And honestly, if you are one of these people that are like you're, you're, you know, maybe you're more on the vanilla side of things. Just watch porn. Like just, just, just watch porn. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at a review of uh, the lead actor uh, Michele Moroni's uh, album. Mm-hmm. Interior journalist Pavel Walensky called the album, quote, extremely tasteless, aggressive promotion for 365 days. And then this is the strangest quote I've ever seen. Uh He compared the studio album to, quote, a dwarf that shows up during a pate feast. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? What? (laughs) What does that mean? Oh, that's. 
Okay. I guess I'm going to play this album on Spotify and <laughs> find out if that makes sense to me. It should be noted. I just looked it up on Roger Ebert's website. They did not review this movie as far as I can tell, but they did review one of the sequels. Uh-huh. And uh, let's just see what the rating is. I'm not going to read in much into it. I'm assuming it's going to be zero stars, but let's find out. The first line is, who doesn't like sex and shopping? Ooh. One star. What? Uh, wow. Jesus Christ. Kind of surprised. That's what? Uh, 25%? Sure. Out of 100? Boy. I... I don't know, man. I, I really, I'm kind of speechless for the first time ever. I have. It, it's not often that a movie makes me like viscerally angry. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like I kind of got a lot of my thoughts about it uh, out of the gate up top. But like, I just feel like this is such a wrong headed, misguided lump of nothing. Yeah. That just somehow both says nothing and pisses me off completely at the same time Uh uh-huh please don't watch this movie i will say this i I never thought i would say these words out loud ever about anything Uh uh-huh i would rather watch another movie that has also equally pissed me off Mm. but is a competently made movie i put that in quotation marks but it 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 has a beginning middle and end i'd rather watch knock knock than watch this wow and i fucking hated knock knock well Knock Knock was fucking great. So first it, off, God, I still haven't seen it, Nathan. It's so good. I know, but I, I, you guys keep like teasing that we might do it on the show, and I'm like, I'm edging myself with Knock Knock <laughs> at this point. Don't. We'll do it as a bonus episode. We'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. All right. I Fine. <laughs> I think you could probably do better. Just instead of watching this, watch 365 days of I don't know porn. Just any, literally anything. Watch Sesame Street. Watch anything else. Why are those the same to you? Because no, because the extreme, they're the extreme opposite ends of things. Like uh, okay, but no, I mean, well, or watch Sesame Street porn. I don't know what to tell you. Fucking it, literally anything. It, li- literally anything. It probably exists. Uh, Mally Rule 34 recommendations. Uh, Get the fuck out. <laughs> this is the first time Mally's kind of felt bad for yeah. putting a movie on the list. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that tells you everything you need to know. It should be noted, Mally also actively sabotaged last season with Sleepers and has also chosen the wrong movie for us to do <laughs> last season. And this... I, I'm not mad at you, Melly, but I really did consider, like, I think I might have to take away his privileges of fucking <laughs> picking movies to do for the show. I just... I, I, again, I'm so speechless. I really don't know what Ugh, to say. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this was something else. This is by far the worst movie we've done, and I really, really don't think we'll top it. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I'd rather watch Sleepers every day for the rest of the year. Oh, buddy, that sounds like a fucking challenge. I, I swear to God, I'll take your privileges away. I swear <laughs> to God. Because keep in mind, there are two more of these. I, there's that, and I know you got an empty slot on the season. I will I will uh, riot. I, I will take a strike. I will. Uh, me and you, Nathan will you unite. We can't do another episode <laughs> of this shit. I refuse. Don't worry. I do have one empty slot left on the season. I know. And I'm actually going to... I already know what I'm going to put in there. Oh, boy. And it's a good movie. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, guys, I, do we even want to do prop cop and everything? Like, I really... I've got some if we do. <sighs> okay. Oh, yeah. I can rattle all of mine off right now. Okay. Uh, well, let's jump into it then. <laughs> All right, for the new listeners, if you've never tuned in before, Prop Cop and all these little segments that we're about to show up are just some little extra things we do. Prop Cop is where we look at all the different props in the movie that we just cu- talked about, and we take one for ourselves. I don't want a fucking thing. Okay. I'll go ahead and tell you. There's not not a single nothing. I don't want a thing. Uh, Mally, go ahead. Oh, no, I don't want anything either, but it's because it's all covered in semen. Yeah. You're probably right. Okay, I'm I'm the odd man out. I want that floral suit that oh. the uh, stylist is wearing when he comes in. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one's wearing like a lime green leopard print suit, which mm-hmm. is pretty great, but the floral. I'm a floral guy. So we should establish that Nathan is built like a sack of coal draped in a floral silk suit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just ripped torn. I think you're right. Okay, well, let's talk about bit part then. Uh-huh. Uh, bit part is where we look at all the extras in the movie. Like all the uh, unnamed actors, and we recast them as ourselves. If I had to be in this fucking movie, <laughs> I would pick the guy in the nightclub that inaudibly tries to talk to Laura, who looks like if Jake Gyllenhaal was cosplaying as John Wick. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this guy, yeah, but that I guess that would be me. That's good. That, that's it. 
Nathan, what about you? Uh, when Laura's boyfriend at the beginning of the movie tries to make a toast, he keeps backing up and there's a guy who is like really nicely dressed who like leans away when it, when Laura's boyfriend puts his ass in his face. Mm-hmm. That's me. <laughs> okay. Just like recoiling at this motherfucker. Okay. Uh, Mally? Oh, I don't want to be in this movie. That's fair <laughs> enough. I will say there is another guy that I think would be pretty good. If I tried out an audition and didn't get the other role, uh-huh. I want to be when Laura and her uh, uh, friend Olga go out to the club for the first time and the ex-boyfriend shows up. Uh-huh. Before he shows up, a guy comes up to them and tries to hit on them and it doesn't work. And when it fails, he just goes, bye and just walks. Away. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that role then. That's good. Yeah. All right. Godspeed for both of you, but we're going to talk about the silver lining of 365 days. <sighs> hey, does it, do I, any volunteers? I mean, if we're taking it as one movie, we don't know what comes next. Yep. I think it's great that Massimo is all alone. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one. What about you, Mally? Uh, the dad dies at the very beginning, so he didn't have to witness this whole fucking mess. There, there you, you go. go. Simba. <laughs> I didn't have one uh, as, uh, you know, aggressive as those two, but I would say the silver lining I had was that Martin, the ex-boyfriend, managed to get away without getting a bullet to the back of his head. Uh-huh. Yeah. He, he managed to get out pretty unscathed because we've seen what kind of person Massimo is. Camo short, still clean, baby. Yeah, so far. Who knows? Maybe that's the cold open of the next movie. He gets it right to the head. <laughs> right, to, right to the camo pocket. <laughs> Uh, all right, what about this, guys? What if people watch this movie and either A, they're uh, dismayed by the ending, or B, they're dismayed by the fact that they had to watch this fucking movie? Uh-huh. They need something else to just wipe the slate clean and and return them to a at least a balanced state, a neutral state. What is a movie that these people could pair with? A pick-me-up movie alternative, the double feature. What do you guys got? Uh, I'll recommend the movie that I watched immediately after this, Mm -hmm. which is on Shudder right now. And it's a little film called Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. (laughs) Uh, also known as the Japanese Evil Dead. It oh. looks like it was shot for $10. It's 64 minutes long, and there's more inventiveness and fun to be had in it than all of 365 days. Awesome. Right on. All right, I'm into that. Uh, Mally, what about you? Uh, literally anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, not wrong. Just literally anything. I would say if you want something equally as dumb that's just as horny but is an actual movie uh-huh. with an actual director Ernest Scared Stupid uh, <laughs> deeply erotic I would recommend Paul Verhoeven Showgirls Jesus Christ it's not a good movie I rewatched that earlier this year and had a grand old time exactly you know it's at least in the hands of a competent director it's terrible but fun but I will say maybe a more ridiculous sex scene than anything in this movie. Oh, mm-hmm. f- yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. The the pool scene? Just f- like just, just uh, fucking like flopping like a dead fish. Yep. <laughs> I- I'll say this too. In lieu of Mally just giving you anything, I'll give you a second one here oh. and say, if you want to watch another movie about a certain amount of days, but significantly shorter, 28 days later, <laughs> completely <laughs> wipe your palate clean. Sure. It's like when you're eating sushi and you got to take some ginger, you know, to, to clean the palate. That's exactly what that movie will do for you in this case. Love it. Fuck it. 127 hours. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, listener, if you have feedback, I fucking dare you to email (laughs) us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. If you have anything positive to say about this movie, I I would almost welcome it because it's an impossible task. Uh But you can also send us feedback about the show if you'd like there. You can uh, DM us on Twitter or on Instagram. You can follow us on those two as well as on TikTok where we post highlights from the show and some behind the scenes stuff occasionally. And yeah, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a rating. That would be incredibly appreciated. And of course, tell your friends and family about the show. Now that that is out of the way and we never fucking have to talk about this movie again, <laughs> Nathan, Yeah. next week, as we mentioned, is the day after Christmas, the episode. Yeah. I have a feeling we're still going to be in the Christmas spirit based on the movie we're talking about. Certainly. So why don't you give us a clue? Bottom line, you don't like next week's movie, I'll drop you out a higher window. <laughs> Meantime... <laughs> I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> that was perfect. That was really, really good. That was fantastic. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we got here, guys, about the movie or by anything else? No. Don't watch it. Yeah. Again, I really am struggling to come up with the words of what to say here at the end. I don't know. I, I've 
I sincerely considered canceling my Netflix subscription over this movie because, like, they paid to distribute this. I thought you were going to say I could seriously, I seriously considered just quitting the show. Like, Killing I'm not me. Doing it. <laughs> Bring it. Oh well, I, 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 I don't know. I really don't. I let's just end it because I got nothing else. I got nothing else. Recipes, oatmeal, and and Laura and <laughs> maybe maybe Laura question mark. And as always. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry. Smells crime. Back to the lab. Full penetration crime. <laughs> penetration crime. Full penetration crime. Penetration. And this goes on and on back and forth for about 90 minutes or so until this episode of the podcast just sort of ends. Excelsior. 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 Look at us. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.